All right, lots of things to go over. I'm going to go over them rather quickly today. I um, want to try to give you some updates and uh, share with you a little bit about what's going on this week when we launched the Z Suite. So, uh, so hang with me as we go through these things and understand there's a reason behind what I'm trying to share with you here. First of all, this is the You Can Make It webinar. It's an interactive learning experience. We strive for mastery. Why is it as important as the how? Uh, we support and encourage each other, and most of all, we try to make this a fun experience because creativity thrives when things are fun. The next thing is that going forward, we're going to use more of an, uh, what I call the open Zoom room concept. I think I may be the only person who uses that idea, but but um, I've been doing this in another group for quite some time, and it's been incredibly successful where we kind of let the the, the people who attend the training to dictate some of the direction that the training goes. Now, obviously, when you have new things, you got a lot of stuff you have to talk about, like today, that changes things a little bit. But um, I, I've, I've already gotten the survey results back from some of you uh, from the uh, uh, survey they put out earlier in the week. Because of the stuff that got involved with the launch, I didn't want to try to get another survey in there. I wanted to act on the stuff that I had. So there'll be more stuff coming very, very quickly, okay? Um, it's kind of a freeform Q&A. It's modeled more after the ask me anything kind of thing that used to take place frequently on Periscope, although it's not as meaningless and nonsensical as Periscope is. Um, it, and, and we take kind of a public problem solving approach, which is a lot, of, a lot more fun and it's a lot more learning and interactive for the people who are participating. Okay. Now, I, I want to talk briefly about every once in a while, I will inject things in here from from my, my coaching experience. And so I'm gonna inject something today in from a coaching experience that I think can be helpful, okay? Uh, Rob, probably not gonna be able to do that today, but we were go we we're going to focus on uh, GIF Zion and Mock Zion in the next two weeks to come. And we'll talk about why we're gonna do it in that manner in, in, in a little bit, okay? So let me share uh, four things that uh, with you today about a movement, all right? Last year, I committed myself to working on how do you develop community and what do you do that can be meaningful in an online kind of community space. And so uh, I took, I took the 10 things from the history of Fast Company and, 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 and pulled four of those out. And I want to share those four things with you today uh, because I think this will be, be helpful, uh, particularly where we are right now with Z Suite. This is more about passion than it is about product. If you focus all of your attention on the product, I don't care what the product is, it will be frustrating. It, it, it will be. Um, Watch the high-end car commercials. They focus on the passion of owning the car rather than the car itself. They focus on the experience of the car rather than the car itself. The way you create a movement is you focus on passion rather than the product. My passion is to make things simple. Now, some of you, your passion is different than that. That's okay. I've been able to take Uzine and make my passion of making things simple work really, really well for you, okay? Uh, Bev, we're gonna talk about that, okay? You guys stick with me as we go through this, all right? It doesn't make any difference what it is. The focus goes off of the product and onto the passion. Second thing is you begin at the beginning, and I think that's what Bev's question is here. Uh, do you have anything about, about Z Suite? We're still working through the, the getting everybody on board and everybody in. I don't wanna do this and, and have to redo it like three times in a row. So we're giving you a week to get all everybody's stuff where it's supposed to be, everything's like, like it's supposed to be lined out because there were some hiccups along the way. And so I wanted to make sure that we had everybody have an opportunity to start at the beginning. All right. Now, I'm going to say this right here because I'm going to do number three. If you fuss, I'll, 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 I'll take you out of the webinar. All right. So just ride with me. I got a purpose. I want to fulfill that purpose today. And so I'm going to ask you to ride through here with me and, and keep your comments focused on, on the direction that I'm going. If you'll do that for me, I, it will help all of us have a really good experience. Okay. Number four, empower people with knowledge. And I want to make sure that I want to make sure that everybody has the tools before we jump in before we jump in 
and start talking about them. And people are, are like, but mine doesn't look like that. Or I don't have this. Or how come that didn't come in? Let us catch up before we give you any training going forward. I hope that makes sense to you. If it doesn't, then you can come back next week. Okay. Communication channels. These communication channels are really clear. I wouldn't be answering these questions if we understand what the communication channels are. The communication channels are really simple. Works like this. Support is for support. I'm going to go through some details about that in just a minute. The webinar, the webinar has a completely different purpose than support. This is not the place where we're going to give you support. What we're going to do here is we're going to give you, we're going to begin at the beginning. We're going to take you through the process so that you get the, the things that you need. And, 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 and we're not stumbling over support. What we're doing instead is we're being able to take you where you're at and move you forward. So the first thing is understand what support is. And I'm going to go through the details on that. Second one is the webinar has a purpose. And the purpose of the webinar is to take you from where you're at to where you want to go. All right. That's why we call it the You Can Make It webinar. It's to take you in that process. Okay. The third communication channel that we have is the Facebook group. And the Facebook group has a different purpose completely. And I'm going to get into that very, very quickly here. Okay. First one is the group, Facebook group, is not for support. It's not for support. If support questions are asked in the Facebook group right now, they will be deleted. All right? That has nothing to do. It's, it's not because they don't want to answer the question. It's because that's not the place to do that. And so I wrote some detailed instruction for another group that I, another community that I, that I work with and that other community, I had to give them instruction as to why we don't do support in Facebook groups. And so I've generic, I've, I've recreated this generically so that it applies to this group. And I want you to understand this. The Facebook group is not for support. And here's the reason why in support, your account information is accessible and your activity, your recent activity is visible. Those two things are very, very helpful in answering support questions. None of that's visible in a Facebook group. So somebody asks a question about their account on Facebook. Now somebody's got to find it, and then somebody's got to go to their account information, and they got to come back. It reduces the workload on support if all of the support questions go to support. Instead of going to Facebook to find the problem, then going to the application, and then going back to Facebook to post a response and waiting for a response there. Support can respond at the point of activity. Keeping everything in one spot makes a good support experience better for everyone. Does that make sense to everybody? It does no good to ask questions in support in the Facebook group. This is not the place to do that. And then finally, if there's a legitimate issue, support has a log of it. And it also has a log of all the other affected users. But if the only place that we get that information is in Facebook, it's impossible for us to log the real severity of the, situ of the situation. I hope that makes sense to everybody. Somebody just fussed in the Facebook group three minutes before I logged out to come into this webinar. Why did you delete my, my support questions in the Facebook group? The reason is because they don't belong there. And I don't care what group you're in, we're all going to tell you the same thing. I, I work in five different groups. You'll get told the same thing in every one of them. But it's so important that we have this conversation once in a while. And so I thought I would share that today as we get ready to have everybody get their accounts all set up properly and everything's looking like it's supposed to. And then next week we can focus on the trap. Okay. The next thing to remember when it comes to the Facebook group is that there's a search feature in the group. Use it. Searching for recurring issues will answer a bunch of your questions. And a great example of that is the black screen question. 
I did a search a while back on the black screen question using the search feature in Facebook. Now, Facebook cycles things out after a while. But I saw that question been asked 53 times. 53 times. It had been asked and answered 53 times. Instead of 51 of those people looking to see if that question had ever been asked before. Does that make sense? Use the search feature. It's there for a reason. And it will help you. And it's available at 3 o'clock in the morning. On the left-hand column, it says search. And it has a little magnifying glass. Would somebody share the uh, Facebook group? It, it's, it, it may not be open right now, Dorn. Um, I know this is an unknown function for some reason in Facebook groups, but in Facebook, there is a, there is a search feature in the Facebook group. Okay. And that search feature is there to make life really easy for everybody. All right, the next thing that I want to share with you, and that that is a support AC. That is a support question. Um, I, I'm not going to I'm not going to answer it here. Here's the update, and maybe maybe this will help to answer that. I asked for updates from support to see what kinds of things I might be able to share with you this morning. Uh, login issues, no login, no API password reset, those kinds of things. You definitely have to send in a support ticket for that. Okay. Second thing is the template in the OTO, the templates in the OTO upgrade support ticket. Use on the 5200 templates should be delivered automatically. If they are not, if you don't see them, then you have to send in a ticket. And I'm going to give you this is the sage old, this is the old man advice here. The sage old advice is that when you ask those kinds of questions about upgrades, make sure it includes your receipt. It makes life really easy because believe it or not, there are scammers who think that they're going to be able to, when the support desk is rushed, to be able to get something for nothing. So make sure you send your receipts in. It makes life really, really easy. Okay. The next thing is that we're experiencing an issue with the template display count. This should be fixed early next week. Again, this is another one of those reasons why we're waiting to be able to do this instead of jumping in today. I always like to have clarity. I'm all about clarity. That's my, that's my goal is to have clarity. And it, it won't do any good when you all are halfway in the process and you're not seeing things the same way, okay? For Mogzine, reach out to us if you can't access the additional 400 templates. Apparently, there's a step there that wasn't clearly communicated, and we want to make sure that everybody uh, is following that step, okay? Just a little bit more on this topic, and then we'll be able to move on. Should be 5,200. That's the that's the point. Now I'm not even sure which product you're talking about, but should be about 5,200. That if you did the OTO, that should be 5,200. All right, the Z Suite updates. One more thing for download issues, technical issues. Please send in a ticket. You know any any download issues, technical issues, billing issues, those kinds of things. Those have to be. That's that has to be a support ticket. It has to be. All right, can't be answered anywhere else. Please use the knowledge base. And um, Rose, can you drop that knowledge base link in there? I forgot to copy that so that people would have it. Um, but please be sure and use the, the uh, knowledge base, the, the link. I think Rose can put that, that link there for you. Um, but make sure that if you have billing refund issues, those kinds of things that you send in a support ticket as well. And finally, and this is an important question and lots of people have been asking about it. We're going to communicate about the transition of our apps to new technology in the third quarter. So, so just keep that under your hat. That's going to happen. Um, it's, it's, in, it's in process and there'll be more communication about that as that day gets closer. Okay. All right. That was a lot to cover in a short period of time. But I think it's really important that we're all on the same page. If you're going to build the community and we're building the community then there has to be this kind of communication and we have to be honest about it, okay?
I'm reading your question, so so give me just be be patient with me. Okay, um, somebody has just asked a question. I've sent two emails and no responses. I, I, I'm going to say something here, and I hope this helps you. Uh, two emails makes twice as much work as one. Twice as much work. The emails are recorded. They did not get lost. the The question will be answered. But when you when 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 I'm looking at a log of emails, and I've got. I've got 24 emails and four of them are duplicates. Then I have to take almost as much time to find the duplicates and address and make sure that they were answered before you add you add layers of complexity to the support staff. Again, this is I have to tell you these things because apparently they're not really obvious. So uh, sending multiple tickets does not help. Uh, I hope you understand that. And adding multiple tickets only, only adds to the, the amount. I'll bet if there were 200 tickets, I will, I will bet on any given day, 200 tickets, 40 of them will be duplicates. All right, now. I'm going to ask you to take this survey for me, okay? If you've not already taken this survey, I'm going to ask you to please take this survey, and I'm going to drop this survey right here so that y'all can take it, and then I can collect the information from that survey going for going forward okay so it's very simple you just go in there and you 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 pick you pick a, a, you check put a check box you don't have to do anything else just put a check box okay please go take that survey as quickly as possible that gives me a um, an opportunity to be able to uh, direct that uh, initial conversation that I had earlier about how that we were taking more of an open forum where you got to plan out part of the schedule. Okay. I just put a clickable link in in the in, in there. That link, that link pops right up. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. That's the wrong. That is not the survey. That's something I was going to give you later. Okay. Hang on a moment. I'm sorry. I just thought I did that right. I'm not used to doing this part. All right. Okay. Sorry about that. You're going to need that later too. That's also something else for later in the survey. Yeah, that's good. I, I'm, I'm gonna sh I'm gonna talk about that in just a little bit. That is a good handout, but I wanted everybody to have it and not just have it someplace. But this is someplace where you could download it. Okay. Uh, all right. There's the survey. I'm sorry. Thank you for keeping me on track. I uh, appreciate that. All right. So. Yeah, that social media graphic. Y'all need that. Uh, and I wanted you to have it, so uh, I, I went and got it, put it in, put it where where I could in a depository, so I could so you could download it. All right. And then if you'll just quickly take that survey this morning, um, you can even do that right now because it's just simply you look at you look at six choices, and you pick one. Okay, that's all there is to it. But that com that that composites that force.
People saying the survey is not loading. Hang on a second. Let's see if I can find out why. It loaded instantly for me. Um, it, it might be, and I know this is true. Demio is a bit of a resource, a bit of a resource hog. Um, and so if you have a limited internet uh, capacity, um, if you have a limited internet capacity, it may be slow this morning. So I apologize for that. Yeah, it, it should load, it should load quickly. Okay. Yeah, and then it just closes by itself. The 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 results are recorded, and it just uh, or else you click the arrow at the bottom. All right, good. I'm getting I'm getting some some of my chat responses saying that 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 it loaded as well. So. All right, good. Now, the reason for the survey is because seriously, I, I'm, I'm very interested in getting your feedback on the things that you think would be most helpful to you. Again, the purpose of the purpose of this, the purpose of this webinar is to help you make it. Okay. And if we can help you make it by giving you the information that's going to be meaningful to you, it will be very, very beneficial to you. Okay, so we, I'm, I'm dead serious about to ask me anything uh, with the, with the restrictions I said before, which have to do. I'm, I'm not support. I'm not going to pretend to be. Um, and so you're going to have to ask those questions of support. Uh, the Facebook, I, 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 my space is the Facebook group and, and the webinars. So uh, this is all about creating. A, creating a, a clear path for you going forward so that you can you can do the Meldy next week next week okay Okay, so that's the point of the uh, of the the um, survey is so that you can I can get the information from you so that we can uh, proceed forward with this kind of an ask me anything sort of a, an approach to the training that we do on Friday mornings. Okay, and I want to welcome everybody who's new. If you're on here, I noticed that the the number of registrants for the webinar jumped way up, and um, The number of, of uh, registrants for the webinar jumped way up, so I want to welcome you if you're new. Uh, we just want to make sure to give you a, a, a good welcome. And a lot of, we have a lot of really cool people in this group. We have a lot of very helpful people. Uh, there's a lot of times when I'll ignore a question and I ignore it because I know there's somebody here that can answer it as quickly and 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 it usually has more access to information than I do. And so that's that's extremely helpful uh, to have them on on board but we're really glad to have the new people here and over and this remember this is not a one and done kind of webinar this takes some time and so we're walking you through um through all of this okay so glad to have you all with us this morning now one of the things that i really like to do and that is just share some of the things that people have shared in the facebook group and this is an example william has done a great job of of sharing with us on a frequent basis the kinds of things that he does on an everyday basis selling uh, his services and working with clients okay and this everybody always gets migrated to the to the newest platform just just every the thing to remember about cloud-based uh, systems is that when you log in, you're using the most current version, okay? Just remember that. Um, William's done a great job. It, William sells his services. He uses Uzine for that, and he has shared here 
the fact that he took one of the Uzon templates, did a whole series of business cards, flyers, magnets, and Facebook cover for a customer. That's really cool. That's what we want to hear. That's the you can make it part. And it's really important that I share uh, uh, William's story with you because he has done some amazing stuff. Look in the group, do a search on William's name. You'll be surprised at the things that he has created using Uzon. Next thing is from our own Gene. Gene, who's always on the webinars and always helpful and always helpful in the group. Uh, Gene has shared with us uh, something here that he did uh, because of a lane closure and um, just a really quick image that he was able to come up with and made it kind of look cool with a little painting of the bridge kind of thing and, and uh, talking about the bridge, <coughs> excuse me, the bridge painting and how that um, that was going to lead to lane closures, and he gave that information. So uh, Gene's really good about doing that. Uh, he works really carefully with the community and makes that, uh, makes that, um, the, the, these these quick posts that you can put in social media and gets that information out and people always look forward to it and they always respond really well. You can see this. Uh, he says use on plus five minutes or was 5,000 views and 45 shares. Really cool. So thank you, Gene, for uh, that amazing piece. Now, here's that piece that I was supposed to give you. I just got my two links turned around. So um, this is the, this is that you need to have this Okay, um, this goes on all the time. Somebody asked a while ago about other platforms and nobody tells anybody when they do something that's new. All right, and so you never have, never, never uh, get a chance to uh, know what somebody's doing until they've already done it, just so you know. And um, this is, somebody put this cheat sheet together and I thought this was amazing. And I've seen this in several of the groups that I'm in. So I wanted to make sure that y'all had it this morning. And um, that way you can use it because if you have to customize, if you, if you use the presets in Uzine, which have not been updated to the current 2019 standards, uh, then you'll have this to be able to go in. And I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. Um, I love the presets. And uh, Daryl, I just gave you a link to that earlier in the in the uh, thread. Maybe somebody's got a. I, I, I don't intend for you to read it here. I intend for you to download it so you have access to it. Um, yeah, I, I'm not trying to get you to read it here. This is way too big for you to be able to read here. That's why I gave you a link so you can download it. Let me grab the link because apparently it's gone. There you go. Thank you, Glenna. I appreciate that. Um, good, good job. See, that's the reason why I sometimes ignore people's questions. So while we're here, I really like this. This was one of the templates. And um, for all the new people, I want you just to really quickly think about all of the possibilities and all of the opportunities that you have because of what you have with Uzine. Uh, you can make logos and flyers and websites and video promotions and frames and icons and all of the, all of the above are all possible. This opens up a world of opportunity to you. You see that right here. This is, he made, he made, what did he make? He made business cards, flyers, magnets, and a Facebook cover. What did Gene do right here? He made a social media post that was able to help the local community know when the lane was going to be closed. So th this is, these are the kinds of things that you can do on a regular basis. Every day there's a need for those kinds of things. And, and I just have a nice little checklist right here of the different kinds of things that can be done. And so if you're brand new, take a look at that. Make sure that you understand how easy it is to use Uzine to accomplish those purposes. All right. The next thing that I have on my agenda this morning is this is my current, this is the current results of the survey that I have before y'all went in and just took the survey now. So I'll, I'll update this, but I wanted to share with you the direction that we're going here because I thought this was beneficial. Okay. So we basically have three evenly divided categories. And those three evenly divided categories are online graphics, and that's this one right here. The uh, the next one is this um, um, the this <clears throat> I'm sorry, this category right here, which is selling services, and then this category over here, which was using Uzine. Now we've spent some time in the last couple of months on selling services and the kinds of things that you can do and how you can make T-shirts and how you can do print and promotional items. We talked about that a lot, so we've moved away from that. 
Um, but we're going to continue to throw those opportunities out as they come up. And I, I monitor all of the print on demand services that I've shared with you. And so I have that information all the time and I can give you updates from there and help you in the process of selling those services. <coughs> Excuse me. And part of the purpose of the, uh, of the Z Suite with the tribe mentality was to help you to sell services. So uh, know that that's part of what we're doing here for, on your behalf, okay? Uh, Usain basics are always good. It's amazing whenever, whenever we go back and we do that over again. Um, yeah, uh, uh, listen, we've had that recording question so many times that it just it, it, it eventually becomes a distraction. We've posted the recording a few times and um, <clears throat> the, the recordings of every single Friday webinar get posted in the group. And then uh, John and Rose put them in another place in support. Uh, they're everywhere. The, the basic answer is they're everywhere. Okay. Um, but I wanted you to have this information because that's going to kind of dictate the direction that we go. Here are the three things, online graphics, selling services, and using Usine. Pretty evenly divided. I'll be interested to see how things change this morning after you all have given uh, me the, the new survey results today. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to run out of voice before the morning's over. So the next thing that we're going to do, then we're going to jump over onto the uh, canvas and we're going to play for just a little bit. And I'm waiting for somebody to say, you misspelled Montserrat, but that's okay. All right. So I'm going to show you some things on the, on the uh, platform that I think will be helpful, particularly for those of you who are kind of new. All right. So let me change my screen here. And if you have any questions, be sure and ask them right now while we're making the change. This will be good uh, for us to do that while we're making the transition here. Um, <coughs> excuse me. We have two seasons in Alabama. We have allergy season and football season. And those are the only two that matter. If you didn't know. The only bad thing about this one way communication is I can't tell who laughs at my bad jokes. Well, let me get my screen set up here so it's easy for me to tell. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, Ken, I lived in Montana for a while, and that was true. It was only two weeks in July. Yeah, Crimson is laughing. Crimson, Crimson, awesome football team. All right, here we go. I, I want to I want to point out some things while we're here, and I, I think this will be helpful. Let me get... Um, I do my best to make sure I can still see the chat session here. Um, okay. <clears throat> All right. Th this is th this is going to be fairly basic for those of you who've been around for a while. It's going to be fairly basic, but I, I, I want you to see something that I think can be helpful here to particularly to the new people. You can actually say if you have a text that you like, or you have it in a style that you like, you can save that text. So I'm going to show you where you do that at first. And for some reason, this is the, th I get asked in every single webinar, how did you get all these texts over here on this side? Well, most of them came because you asked that question. So, so you can tell how many times the question has been asked. All right. So this little icon right here, this, that's a universal save icon. Okay. So wherever you see that you're saving something. And when I save that, when I save that, it gets stored over here and then I can bring it back. Now, here's the thing that's interesting about the saving of that. It saves it in the size that it is right here. OK, so if I if I click on save right here, this will go to the bottom of my list. See, it told me that my, my, my font was saved. And notice that when I click on this, it's exactly the same size and exactly the same color. Okay, so I'm going to delete that. I'm going to delete this one because you'll notice that some of these, I'm going to delete this. 
some of these are like this, okay? Gigantic, we did this, actually did this, this font for a t-shirt. <clears throat> but hold down my shift key <coughs> and I can readjust the size of this. But notice <clears throat> it came out in exactly the same style. Yeah, David, I, I, I've addressed that already. <clears throat> so it saves it. <coughs> Man. It saves it in, it saves the font. It saves it at the position that it's in. It saves it if I have any, any, um, any special effects on it. Okay. So if I have a border around it, it saves the border. If I have it in, in any other format or any shadowing or anything like that, if I have a blur around it, then it saves all of those, okay? No, it does not tell you what the font is. That's one of the reasons why sometimes you'll see uh, over here on my, on my, in my, um, <clears throat> sometimes I'll put the name of the font, but I don't necessarily have to because when I click on the font, what's right, it, the information's right here, all right? So I've got the name of the font right here. <coughs> but that's a good question. Roy, can you not see my pointer? That's the first time I've had that question. If you import a font, all right? If you import a font, let me address this because this is important. If you import a font, then you have limitations with it. You'll have to import the font into your system. <coughs> I've finished my coffee, so I'm running out of things to keep my throat lubricated. You, you'll import it into your system. Okay, so you see this right here, system fonts. System fonts are very, very limited, so you'll know, okay? Now I'm gonna change this to a system font and watch what happens when you do that. When I change this to a system font, notice that it went from the angle that it was at to being perfectly horizontal. System fonts are horizontal. We don't have flexibility with system fonts. I'm not gonna get into how you can mess with that right now, but, my, but the point is this. Going back to my graphic a while ago about the three reasons, the three primary reasons that people wanted, uh, three primary things that people wanted addressed in the in the webinar. One of them was online graphics, and the other one was using YouTube or Uzine. So um, this is what I want you to understand about system fonts. <clears throat> if you can use a font that's already in Uzine, you're way better off. They're designed for everything that we do online, okay? So uh, this is, if you can use a Uzine font, then that's what you want to do. You have way more flexibility with it, and they're much more stable than a system font is. Does that make sense? And the truth is it's going into uh, Facebook. How long's the life expectancy? It's going to Twitter. How long's the life expectancy? It's not like you're branding yourself because you use a special font. I know people will disagree with me about that all day long, but that's, that's still my point, okay? Make your life easier for you rather than more complicated. <coughs> But that's where your system fonts will always be stored down here under system fonts because they're taking them from your computer, your computer system, the fonts that are stored in your computer system. And those are only horizontal fonts. That's what they're designed to do, okay? And we have been adding more fonts as we go along. Um, And, and I've noticed a, a whole bunch of new fonts that have gone in 
Um, John's really good about adding additional fonts in here. Like, like this font right here is brand new. I have not seen this one before. This yellow tail font. Well, that's kind of cool, you know. So this is this is something kind of cool for you to play with. The the great thing about being able to save your fonts. Okay, there's a couple of ways you can group things on the screen. Let me just let me do this. That, that I, I say that was I was using that for the corner of a book. Um, and and I, I I made six different copies of the book, so I needed six different uh, six different fonts saved in the same position. Um, and then I just have a whole bunch that we've saved out of out of other things, um, like this one for example. We've used that a lot. Um, okay, so this is this is how to group things, Rob. <clears throat> First of all, you got to you've got to know where your layers are at. And we're we're working on some layering issues that that will be down the road, but um, but but just keep that in mind that, that you need to know where you're at. For example, this is sitting on top of this frog's eye. Okay, so if I want to if I want to group these things, I've I've got two options. One, I can do this, and notice up here it says that they've now been grouped. If I click on that group, then that saved icon comes up. I can click on that saved icon go over here to my graphics this is one of the huge time savers and the, and the great advantage of uzine go back over here now you noticed i've saved all of that but it didn't save the background okay and i'll tell you why in just a second the background here is a solid color it is part of the background notice that it's a gradient right here so it's not going to save that if I had this sitting on an image, okay, all right, let me show you again. I'm, uh, can you hang on to that question for just a second, Bill, and we'll, we'll do it again in just a minute because I'm going to show you a second way to do that, okay? Yeah, here's what you do if you have multiple multiple things that you want to save as a group. Click on the, on the one that's on the top. Okay, I have to ungroup this. But I click on the one that's on the top. Rob, then I click on this on, on another one over here, okay? And you see how the box went around both of those images right there, but it didn't get the frog? And then I click on the frog, now it's got all of them. So I can, I can ungroup this, and I can just do the block, I can just do the sketch block and the frog like that, and it's probably not going to save it, this image here, okay? Yeah, sometimes you have to think, again, you have to begin with the end in mind. Am I going to need to save this as a group? Because if I'm going to have to save it as a group, maybe I don't put anything else on the screen until I've saved it. That's, it, again, planning kind of helps a little bit when you do that. Yes, you hold down your shift key when you are selecting, <coughs> when you're selecting the elements that you want to save. You hold down the shift key. Now, notice up here. This is where that button is at that somebody asked about a minute ago. And it just says right now, it says a group. So I have a group here. Once I've had the group, then I click on the group and it gives me the option to save it. Okay. And notice with this one over, can you see the far on the far left side where my mouse is at now? This is saved just the frog and just the sketch block. Even though this is inside of that. But yeah, that's it. That's it. And oftentimes when you, here's how I discovered it. Okay. This is, this is Eric's training 101. I took templates apart. That's why I called it templateology. I went and took templates apart and I realized what was happening there. And that made it really easy for me to figure out what was going on. Does that help? So not only can I save the, 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 the font, like I did over here, not only can I save the font, but I can also save a group of things by using my shift key. <coughs> no, I still got that saved as a group. But not only can I do this, not only can I save this. Now, thing you have to remember about using this with, with, um, with, with um, uh, 
uh, vector images with a transparent background is you want to make sure that you're in the in the letter itself and you don't miss you don't miss it okay but you 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 click on the first one hold down your shift key click on the next one hold down your shift key and click on the next one and now you've grouped them and you just simply save the group and then you go over here to graphics and you can see that I've saved all three of those text elements and not the frog and not the background. That's a good question, Rob. Um, yeah, um, once we get the templates in and everything, everybody's seeing the same screen and all that kind of stuff, again, <clears throat> some of those things will do. The, 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 you know, I had a whole training on that. I called templateology, and, uh, which was the art and science of taking a template apart until you got it the way you wanted it. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a good topic. It's always a good topic. It's something that um, some people have gotten really, really good at. Gene does a great job of being able to find a template that does exactly what he wants. Gene actually put in the group the other day a video on, um, um, he actually put in the group a video. <coughs> Rob, I'm not sure. That was, a, that was probably been almost two years ago that we did that one. So I don't know if, if we have immediate access to that or not. Um, but we've changed where that support stuff went since then. But uh, Gene did a really good video of taking a template, removing the background from the template, leaving the elements in the template, faded them, and then used them as an overlay on a video. It was, it was just great. It was great. Uh, it was something that we had done from the, the McDonald's one day. And uh, so it was a really, it was a really cool, really awesome opportunity there. So we've talked about saving the templates. <clears throat> Talk about up here. I want to talk about online graphics for just a moment. Online graphics typically are in 72 DPI. Just keep that in mind. They load faster. Uh, it makes for a better experience for loading up on web pages. <coughs> uh, Facebook's going to optimize it the way they're going to optimize it. And sometimes they look clear. Sometimes they don't look clear. And that's a Facebook issue. It has nothing to do with the, the quality of graphic that we give them. Okay, now a while ago I was talking about presets, so let's talk about presets for just a moment. Uh, the presets look like this. Okay, I've now put taken this image right here. I'll put this over here. I will ungroup this. I'll get rid of this right here. Take this, and we'll make this a little bit bigger. Okay. Now I have this in Facebook Ad Medium. Which, by the way, Facebook Ad Medium is one of my favorite. It's one of my favorite layout formats. Okay, uh, works in lots and lots of places when you do that. Um, <coughs> I like it for blog post headings, uh, all kinds of stuff. So this is really cool. Okay. Yeah, if you're watching on a smartphone, it's just going to be difficult. Okay. All right, now. I want you to see something here. I've created this little Facebook image. It's a Facebook ad size. When I click on the preview, it shows up like it was in a Facebook ad. All right? That's where those previews become really, really cool. It depends. It's this, it's this Facebook medium ad is the one I like the best. All right. Um, this size right here seems to be a really good universal size, uh, 1200 by six, 628. Um, and so I use it. It's, it's also the side, the right size for that Facebook medium size ad like this.
Yeah, we did a, we we did several weeks on that, Rob, not too long ago. Um, if you look in the group, you may find the Friday webinar. Just just do a search in the group Friday webinar replays, and uh, we've got a couple in there that we've done just recently on um, on using uh, uh, Uzion to create a transparent ping image. And then we also did one where we reduced the opacity of the image, it's, of the overlay image itself. Uh, Gene did a video on how to do that. I did a, I did a webinar on how to do that. Uh, you'll find a lot of information in the group. Again, use the group search feature. You'll find a lot of information there that will be very, very helpful to you. Um, the other thing is that this, this size, this Facebook ad size right here is not far off from when I go to YouTube and do the uh, YouTube thumbnail. See, it's almost the YouTube thumbnail size. It's almost the video splash cover size. All right, so that makes it really easy. I, if, if I lay out using the Facebook uh, ad medium, then I'm hitting pretty close on the size that it needs to be for other things. You know, here's the thing, y'all y'all are giving me lots of helpful suggestions here about changing the size of my pointer. I want you to remember something. I, I do this one hour a week. The rest of my life, I have to live with that pointer. <laughs> okay, just keep that in mind. Um, and, and I live with my pointer. Okay, any other questions before we wrap this up for the day? That was just kind of a quick introduction to some things that I thought would be helpful to you initially when you start. I found this graphic over here under graphics. You click on integrations. Uh, I, I really like frogs, and so I, I had that frog left over from last week, and um, so I decided I would use the frog again today. And... Um, And you, you'll find all kinds of stuff over here under the graphic integrations. All right. I found something here. My, my, I'm taking my grandson to the beach. And so the other day he called me and he was walking around with a, a fake peg leg on. He's five. He was walking around with a fake peg leg on. So I'm going to send him this video or this, uh, this uh, frog right here. <coughs> All right, with that, I'm gonna wrap this up today. Uh, I, I wanted you to see where all of the stuff was at, kind of where some of the things were at and some of the things that, that might be helpful to you, okay? And then next week, as we begin to put this whole tribe thing together, uh, I'll be sharing more information with you as we go. All right, thank you so much for joining us on this Friday. I know your time is precious. I hope we've made this meaningful to you. Uh, that was my intention. And so I want you to all to have a blessed weekend as you go uh, and do the things that you do. Uh, and we'll be, at, we'll be uh, celebrating Easter this weekend. So good to have you with us. We'll be back here next Friday, same time, same place.